Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Metroid Monday. This is, of course, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. And, uh, I'd like to talk about something, but first, in case you missed the last episode, uh, you know, stuff happened. I went into Metroid Hell, and despite being in Metroid Hell, I began, well, I didn't just begin, but I assembled most of this Theronian bomb that I am going to need to blow up that. That shield that's surrounding the Leviathan Seed. And, uh... Yeah, it's gonna be interesting what happens. Because this bomb... This bomb is a sight to see. In fact, this bomb is about to compl be completed in this area right here. We got a couple of Seeker Missile Puzzles, back-to-back, -back, all that happy horse shit. Do some Seeker nonsense. Yada, yada, yada. And now we have freed the last portion of the Theronian bomb. I mean, th this is Samus' MO. This is a bomb so magnificent. Can I, can I please speak? Obviously not. This is a bomb so magnificent that I am quite confident that it, it'll probably destroy all of Alicia. You know, Samus is a habit of... of chaos following her wherever she goes. Every planet, every space station just manages to blow up anytime she's near it. And I have the sneaking suspicion that Alicia is going to be no exception. Just seems like an unstable planet to begin with. It kind of seems odd to me that the Phazon is affecting it so much because it's it's in the clouds below. Oh, hey Stan. Yes, I know. Excellent work indeed. Thank you, Stan. We are now ready to execute the final stage of our plan. Which is? Place the bomb in the cargo hold of the Spire pod. We will mark the Spire location on your map. Please hurry. There is no time to lose. Uh, I'd love to be a team player here, Stan, but you have to understand, uh, doing all this stuff that you're asking me to do, it costs extra. I'm a bounty hunter. I'd like a bounty on all of this shit that I'm doing for you. That would be great, Stan. Thank you. Um, but this is going to segue into something of a important matter that I'd like to discuss with you guys. Something happened last night. You know, you may have heard about it. Uh, I know nerds like us, well, like myself, I don't know about the walk of life that you guys come from, but judging from the fact that you are watching a 25-year-old man playing a video game, uh, I'm going to assume you're just as nerdy as I am. And like most of us, you probably wear it with a badge of pride, right? But um, I know we stereotypically aren't sports fiends, but what happened last night, uh, you may have heard about it, it's the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, the Super Bowl's a big game. You know, you've got all the funny commercials that happen, and, you know... It, the big halftime game show and all that stuff. All that shit, completely irrelevant. What I'm going to be talking to you about is not what happened athletically or anything like that. I'm going to talk to you about what happened psychologically. Because last night, 43 to 8. And I do apologize to any, you know, Broncos fans that, that, that may be listening in because this, this is... This does not bode well for your team, what I'm about to say. But it's not so much about your team, it's about something important about psychology. Not just human psychology, but psychology in general, how nature works. But first, let's place the bomb down. Let's set up us the bomb. Samus set up us the bomb. It's time to let the fun begin. Oh, that's a beautiful bomb. Roll that beautiful bomb footage. Alright, Stan. The bomb is in place. Now just do all this shit. Get this show on the road, Stan. Samus, now that the bomb is in place, return to the AU chamber so that we may discuss the final stage of our plan. Uh, no. How about you return to the AU chamber, Stan? Oh, wait! You can't leave it because you are the AU! Na, 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 na. Anyways, um, 
I'd like to talk about what happened last night, because, as I said, I'm sure it's a sour subject, uh, but, you know, given the fact that it happened, and the, the team that came up on the winning end is, of course, representing the city that I one day dream of being in, I, I'm excited about it, and I, like I said, I'm not big on sports, but it's a nice little asterisk on top of everything. You know, I'm not big on sports. I'm not going to sit here prancing around being a fair weather fan or anything like that. But it's nice to see the city that I long to live in uh, win a championship. And it's been a very long time. In fact, the only team that's ever won anything there is the fucking Seattle Supersonics. And they're not there anymore. So it's a city that's been starved for a championship. And I'm going to hold off on my conversation with Stan to explain something, you guys. This is important, and I'd like everybody to follow me very closely. Um, last night was a lesson in psychology. Uh, not just in football, but in life. What happened at the start of the game was not just a, a choke by Peyton Manning. And I, I see a lot of people saying that, well, Denver didn't show up to play. And while that may be true, you guys have... To, I don't think you're giving enough due credit to what the the Seattle defense just did to that entire Denver team, uh, because it, it wasn't just that the, the Denver team didn't show up to play. I think they were taken off their game immediately from the start, and that safety at the, the very first play of the game, uh, Seattle forces a safety. They're up two points. And immediately you look in Peyton Manning's eyes. This is a guy who's, whose postseason career is less than stellar. Now, he's got a legacy to make. He, he's, got, he's come to this game with a chip on his shoulder. This could be his last rodeo. And immediately when you see that two points pops up, in fact, when, when you see the ball just go over his head, you see a flicker of fear, and I'm not big on sports, like I said, but I saw fear in his eyes, and I would have seen fear in this in Russell Wilson's eyes if this happened to him. This is not just me playing favorites here. Now, what happened was predator versus prey. Rather than be a chump and, and let Denver find their groove again, because if Seattle had, had just played as chumpishly as Denver did, Denver would have found their groove and they would have, you know, won in very convincing manner. Seattle didn't do that. Uh, they were sharks. They smelled blood in the water. After that safety, they get two field goals. They bring the score up to eight to nothing. All the while, they bring themselves a nice handy little interception to keep Peyton Manning's, you know, uh, confidence in check. Keep his confidence in check. He's rattled. He makes stupid decisions. The entire team makes stupid decisions. And then the pick six happens. And, you know, that's the point in the game where you're like, well, maybe they just let the half end come back after the stupid Bruno Mars show, which was actually very good, by the way. I'm not a fan of Bruno Mars, but it was a very well choreographed little uh, operation with the red hot chili peppers they had. But immediately, first play of the second half, punt return for a touchdown. That's when you knew it was over. Uh, This, the the Seattle defense, Seattle in general, not just the defense, but Seattle in general did not give Denver any room to breathe. And this is how predators work. And this leads to the advice in this long, now it stands looking at me. I, I can see the way you're looking at me, even though you don't have any eyes. You're looking at me wondering, what the fuck am I doing sitting here jumping in place trying to explain something to people that you don't see, Stan, but they see you. They see you. Wave hi to Stan, everybody. Wave hi. Say hi, Stan. But this leads to my point. Uh, This is all walks of life. This is, you know, dominating sports teams. This is predators in nature. And this is bullies on the playground. Okay? And... We, we, as nerds, you know, have a very strong habit of, of, of being meek in situations like this. Didn't happen to me so much, uh, but I, I know that it happened quite a lot to people, uh, you know, from a weaker mindset. You know, they, they love the video games. They, they don't relish the gym. And, you know, sometimes they balance it out. Sometimes they balance nerdiness with athleticism. But 
the point that I'm trying to make to you guys is that the instant you let a bully see fear, uh, they will kick your shit in. Like the Seattle Seahawks did to the Denver Broncos. And that's not taking anything, you know, any personal crack shots to the Denver fans. Like I said, I don't follow football too much. It just so happens that the city that I seem to be enamored with at the moment just won the national championship. But whatever. Um, What I'm trying to say is that if you let a bully or a predator see fear, they will take advantage of it. Which is why when your back is against the wall... You don't say, oh, please don't hurt me anymore. You say, fuck you. And you sit, you hit him back. That That's, you know. The Theronium bomb is primed and ready. Excellent work, Samus. Thank you, Stan, and, and thank you for bearing with me. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the advice that I have for you guys. I know there are younger audience members who may end up being, that happen to watch my stuff, and... I don't condone the language that I use. I don't condone anything, but I do not condone. I also don't condone just laying down like a chump. And the sad truth of the matter is, at least when I was going growing up in school, uh, the faculty really didn't do a whole lot about stuff that was happening to people. And very often, I, I would notice people, and even on my own, a couple of occasions, uh, had to fight back. And, you know, it is what it is. Scuffles happen in school. It, it's it's nothing worth you know a lawsuit or anything like that. Kids fight. Kids hurt themselves. As long as there's no bones broken or any real assault that happens, it is what it is. It's part of growing up. But when your back's against the wall, you got two choices. You got a choice to be the prey or to be the cornered fox that's more dangerous than a jackal. See what I did there? Anyways. Let's continue talking to Stan. To drop the bomb onto the Leviathan shield, you must move the bomb pod directly over the Leviathan and shut down the pod's engine. This must be done manually. Oh, this is gonna cost double, Stan. This is a dangerous mission. Will you accept it? D- do I have a choice? I mean, I, if you would, I, say no, I suppose it gives you an opportunity to keep going around Elysia and doing other stuff. But... Given the fact that most of what I require is blocked off by the spider ball right now, there's really no point in continuing to explore. I want to get this fucking planet done. Next video, it's going to be done. So, yes. Thank you, Initiating Skytown migration. Thank you Stan. Alright, now give me my mission briefing. This is so cool. It's a city in the sky that moves. Eat your heart out, Twilight Princess. This is awesome. So it must be done manually. We will move the Skytown facility as close as possible to the Leviathan shield, and then deploy the bomb pod. Do you understand what you are supposed to do, Samus? Uh, no. Your task will be to shut down the engines when the bomb pod is centered over the Leviathan. Uh, okay... Uh, no, you might want to explain it some more. Your task will be to shut down the engines when the bomb pod is centered over the Leviathan. Do you understand what you are supposed to do, Samus? Uh, no. Your task will okay, enough of this. This is just going to be an endless cycle. This is the problem with video games giving you a question, a yes or no question. Uh, nine times out of ten, your answer is always going to have to be yes. Very rarely does, does a game ever give you this kind of a choice. And Nintendo games are most notorious of it, but whatever. After shutting off the engines, use the escape capsule to return here. Skytown migration complete. Whoa. You must now proceed to the bottom pod. We will release the cables once you're in position. All right. Thank you, Stan. We regret this mission places you in mortal danger, but there are no other options. Good luck. Uh, Stan, you obviously don't know Samus very well. Every time she steps out of her apartment, uh, I'm sure she's in mortal danger. Uh, It just comes with the territory with Sammy. It's an unfortunate truth, but it is what it is. I'm sure Sammy's used to it. She doesn't cower in fear of Ridley at the sight of... Oh, wait, yeah, never mind. (laughs) But, um, this is a mission 
that I'm not sure how I feel about because here's the problem. This is a mission where there are unique enemy types introduced. There's a new type of ship that does damage to this platform that I'm on. There's new types of melee troopers that come up. Uh, there's at least two, maybe even more things that I have to scan. I only know of two. It's been a long time since I've done this mission, and I remember my very first time I, I missed the scan because these enemy types only appear here. It's so douchey. It's worse than the Ice Shriek Bats from Metroid Prime. But it is what it is. I've already missed scans, so if I miss a couple more, who the fuck cares? Zeus, we are sensing a large number of enemy units in your vicinity. Ah, oh, crap. You want to give me some aerial support, Stan? The pirates must have detected your movement toward the sea. Go figure. If the spire is destroyed before reaching the impact site, all hope for Alicia is lost. Yeah. We must defend the spire at all costs. Okay. It'll cost you triple then, Stan. Use everything in your power to ensure its safe passage. Good luck, Samus. Thank you, Stan. I assume that I'm going to need it. Alright. Now it's time to show you what you're supposed to do when your back is against the wall. Do you let the pressure get to you? Do, you? do you curl up into a ball like a scared little child? No. You destroy the assault skiff and strike down on it, on it with great vengeance and furious anger. I'm sure that I already missed like a, an objective for doing this with no damage to the spire. Because uh, I think that's an actual thing. Like, do this with no damage done to the spire. Um... It is what it is, though. I really don't care. God damn. Talk about wasting energy tanks. So, we've got an assault skiff that I had to deal with. We've got pirates on board. That's no good. I mean, th these fuckers are everywhere. We've got the Jolly Rogers. We've got aerial troopers who I will turn into... Mush. Hello. Hey, new trooper. Armored shield trooper. Oh, you are such a douchebag. You want to be armored? You want to be an armored shield trooper? Well, I'll kick your ass and take your name and fuck you up. I'll fuck you. I'll make you humble. I put you in the camel clutch. Fuck your ass. Fuck your mother. And just make an absolute ass of myself for all of the internet to see, as usual. It's like, what else is new? Land's making an ass of himself again. Eh, it's what I do best. Unfortunately, there's really no way to take advantage of uh, hyper mode for too awfully long. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm almost positive that there's something that you can get from having no damage done to the spire structure, because the only thing that really hurts it are the uh, little assault skiffs. Uh, the things that drop the enemies down, the enemies themselves, it makes no difference. In fact, you're invincible in hyper mode if you utilize it correctly. So, there's really no problem here. And there's no reason you should lose this. I mean, I've come close, I believe, on hyper mode especially. It's really difficult. But, again, no, no real reason that you should fail this. And as I said, and, and a very fitting quote that happens to take place here, for all of my Lannister fans out there, you know, I noticed that, um, and I'll be plugging a certain something at the end of this, but um, as Sirio says, what do we say to death? Not today! Take that, all of you fucks! And now we are over our objectives. The pirate assault has failed! But, uh, yeah. It's time to shut off the thrusters. It's time to escape this hunk of junk. This beautiful spire pod that was a nice little junction in the east side of Elysia. Alright. 
Emergency escape pod. Let's get this show on the road. Yeah. Gotta love the Chozo. Wait, what? Uh, Stan? Look, I know I was annoying by sitting there and, and talking and ignoring you and not getting on with the mission, but that's no reason to give me faulty equipment, Stan. <laughs> this is all your fault. Stan. I'll teach you to make a monkey out of me on my show, Stan. Anyways, um, yeah, Stan has fucked me. Uh, we are in a faulty escape pod, and it's up to... Handy chick Samus with her nice little welding gun with soldering iron to take care of business. And of course, we've got stupid things that we have to pull off, and we can only pull them off if we scan them. That's how fucking gimmicks work. I can only imagine how awesome this game would have been if it, if it had been made after that awkward phase when Nintendo was going gaga over every fucking motion gimmick that the Wiimote could do. It is what it is. It's still a great game. It's just... It, it's got some fumbling points. It's the weakest of the trilogy, in my opinion. Some wouldn't agree at all, but... Uh, hello? The Wiimote had a little bit of flub-up. All right, we've got all three circuit boards online. The stupid steam spider things are just swarming in a last-ditch effort to screw me, I guess. I'm not sure why. Stan? Are you sure you're playing for my team? Are you on Team Sammy, Stan? Anyways. But, uh, yeah, I... For all my Lannisters out there, House Lannister, who's who's on Team Lan, um, and, and th this is actually something that NCS decided to refer to my fan base, which is actually I'll, I'll wear that as a, ba a badge of honor. The Lannisters, House Lannister, gotta love the Game of Thrones, but um. We have started. In fact, the first episode of the heavily hyped up Metroid Prime race that I've been alluding to for well over a month and a half now um, that has actually been released and it's up already for you guys to see on the channel of one mage captain Gilshanks as I had said uh, once or twice in the past the races between myself Gilshanks um, Chaos Sinful Rose and uh, Papa Murph CM so hop on over there show your support as a Lannister I will link it to you in, in the massive description below and try to sift through the... <laughs> Gotta love the Samus fanfare that just pops up as she gets out of the escape pod. It was a nerve-wracking experience. The plan worked. Uh, yeah, the plan worked. You got something to say to me, Stan? The bomb's impact resulted in the destruction of the Leviathan's shield. And the sea is now exposed. Yeah, that, that's fine and dandy. I think you owe me an apology for your faulty fucking equipment, Stan. Fly there and destroy it. Uh, fly there and just, uh, f fuck you and hell no, Stan. This is your fault. Fly there and destroy it. Actually, aren't I, like, next to a fucking... Um, landing site right now? Oh, that's convenient. Landing site A. Very nice. How nice of you to put me right here, Stan. Anyways, um... Yeah, like I said, I, I will leave all of the information for the Prime Race in the description below. It's not going to be on my channel because I'm not the one running it, but I am taking part. So, if you guys want regular updates on that, I suggest you subscribe to Gilshanks and uh, all that happy horse shit. Go and support your lord and master, the Lannister... Yeah, again, props to NCS for actually coming up with that little name for my fan base, but eh, it is what it is. So, enter the ship. 
And it's time. It's time for the day of destiny. The day of reckoning is at hand for Planet Elysia. That was actually a very underwhelming explosion, I must say. But yeah, I wasn't going to talk too much crap about it. The game is good. Unfortunately, we are at the twilight of Elysia. This is the this is the seed. And in the next episode, I'm going to be fighting the boss of Elysia. I mean, I, I didn't really find anything in the lore that referenced anything that I would be dealing with. I mean, the Brionian lore mentioned Mogonars, so that kind of makes sense for Mogonar to be the boss. But what the fuck would be the guardian of the Elysian Leviathan? Well, that's for me to know and you to find out. Unless, of course, you already know, in which case you found out probably years ago. But yeah, I guess. Anyways, guys, I hope uh, you have enjoyed this marvelous episode of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption here on Metroid Monday. Uh, happy February, by the way. Uh, February is an interesting month. Valentine's Day is full, full bloom. Uh, we have uh, adjusted into the new year. And, of course, the Super Bowl happened. So, yay for the Seahawks. But I, I really don't care. Uh, it just so happens to be a team that represents the sports team or the city that I am currently enamored with at the moment. So, congrats to Seattle. Uh, you guys deserve it. Uh, hopefully, at some point in the next year, I will be there to celebrate along with you guys. But it's not going to happen yet. Uh yeah, you definitely deserve it after having lost the Supersonics to Oklahoma, so whatever. Um, again, I'm not much on sports, but this is where I will see you guys on the next episode. I get a boss to kill, and I intend to do it with great vengeance and furious anger, and not taking it like a bitch. Because what do we say to death, my Lannisters? Not today. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. Let me know what you thought with your comments and feedback. And if you really enjoyed the video, I've got a slew of other projects going on that I update regularly. So if you're interested, please consider subscribing to stay up to date. Have a good day, everyone.